But also, y'all are holding it with just one hand. Why? You remember how expensive this was? How much did this thing cost you? Get those hands on there. You're going to be using camcorders, which have a similar way of holding them. They're wider, obviously, or deeper, I should say. They're deeper. But you really need to get both hands on to it. You want your hands on this device. Now, now that you've got it in landscape mode and you're holding it with both hands, you'll find your picture is much better. It's much more stable. And we can improve on that. There are tricks to utilizing cameras that make them more stable when you're dealing with a moving target, which I am being right now, aren't I? I am pacing. I'm doing it on purpose. And you've got to try and keep me in the frame, right? Like you don't want me to just walk off the screen and keep talking at you in this loud voice that I'm using that projects in the back of the room that I'm doing on purpose, right? We need to get ourselves in a position where we can get this camera to be stable. Because if you're holding it in just one hand or even with both hands, you're a dynamic system. You're not still. So the camera bounces. Now, we've all watched video on platforms like YouTube and TikTok, any of the streaming things especially, where people can upload content, Vimeo, etc. And when you see somebody who's amateurish with their video recorder, be it a phone or a camcorder, and they're holding it wrong and it's bouncy, you just are like, Ugh. I'm getting seasick watching this. I can't watch this. We've all had that happen. Every one of us. This is normal. So we want to remove some of that. We can do a lot with ourselves, our bodies, to enhance how this camera is getting its video. One of those is elbows in. Pretty simple. Bring those elbows in. Don't be out here. Don't be up here. Bring those elbows in. Much more natural position for it. Right, and now the camera's down here, but that's fine. I've got this great big viewport. I can see just fine. I don't have to have this in front of my face. I can have it here. I can get it here, hold it with both hands. Make sure, of course, my fingers aren't in front of the camera. I've got some fingers curled around. Um, my case was much more useful when I had one. It had a lot of ridges on the sides, helped out a lot. It broke, it broke during our first class together, just two days ago, playing with it in my pocket and snapped it. So that helps to have it be a little bit more user-friendly and shape and size. But getting those elbows in reduces a lot of the bounce. And I'm walking around, and it's already much, much less bouncy, even though I'm moving. Now also, you might notice up here it says, turn with core. As I'm walking back and forth, I'm seeing a lot of people just turn their hands, right? Or you're just kind of angling the camera a little bit, maybe turning your head. But that's not really what we want to do. We want to give the camera the support. So you really want to use your core muscles. When you're holding a camera, just any kind of camera, digital camera, your phone, a camcorder that I'm going to be giving you, you want to get both hands on it. You want to put those elbows in, and you want to turn with your core when you're tracking something. You want to use longer muscles because the motion is much more smooth. We want smooth motion. We don't want our subjects to be bouncy. All of our phones, all of our camcorders, all of our digital devices that take video, yeah, they have anti-shake technology. It'll help take a little wiggle out of it. That's kind of impossible not to have some. But they can't really deal with when you're moving around. And sometimes, yeah, you're literally just moving with the camera. If I've got to track somebody, I'm turning with my core, right? I'm keeping my elbows in. I'm making sure that this is nice and smooth. Even though I'm moving, I'm sort of straightening, right? Nice and smooth. Because I'm turning with my core, I'm getting to use the long muscles. I'm going to get to use a whole you know, girdle around me. Next, this one you probably already know, but maybe you're not doing it probably kind of know. Center 75. Look at these lenses on our phones. They're round, right? They're little bubbles. It's fish eye in quality, which means that the edges of it are always bent. It always curves out. 
That's an effect of having a lens that picks up light. So the best part of your camera is going to be the center 75%. And to that end, you have the ability, if I can get this just right, you have the ability to turn on the grid lines. Every one of your phones in the settings has grid lines. See them? See how they have the grid lines on there? Right? You want to turn those on. They don't show up in the video. Turn those on. Those are in your settings on your phone, on the camera. You can probably turn them on dynamically right now, in fact. That center square is the best one. That's where you're going to get the best video. That's where your subjects are not going to have a weird like, yeah, going on. Now, the digital cameras we have, they do help. They actually do de stretch it, they de fisheye lens it. But that's probably even better. Just having an awareness of where the best part of the screen is. Uh, mine's turned on to having nine squares. I know some of them do 16. Yeah, the more grid you can have, the better. You can tell where that best portion of your screen is by having that grid on. It really, really helps. With the camcorders that we're gonna be using, they also have that grid. Well, some of them also have that grid, not all of them. So you do have to kind of approximate it. But understand, that that center portion of a screen, that's where the good stuff is. That's where it's most true. Okay, that's number four. Number five, be colorless by color. We are dynamic beings. It is essentially impossible for us to not bounce. You know, you're just like a bunch of pieces of coral held together with rubber bands inside of a sack plastic sack full of water in a very mechanical sense that's all we are that thing not very rigid it's not very good for holding a camera still we have tricks that help us but nothing quite as good as a nice old tripod but those aren't always available but you can become one everybody get up against the wall Get up against the wall. Right? I can get in the doorway. That's even better. Just get up right against the wall. You're going to create a tripod with your body. Three points of contact is what you want. So, if I'm up against the wall with my back, I put my shoulder blades into it. I put one foot forward and one foot up against the wall. I am now pushing my weight into the wall, which means that I don't have to dynamically hold that. All of a sudden, this becomes really, really stable. It's even more so if you can do this into a doorway, that is if you don't stand someplace, because I can get myself in here, wedge my shoulder in, one foot up against the door plate, the other one out, right? I can get really good, stable three points of contact. I am a tripod. What if uh, you can't get up against something? Ah, oh, crap. I'm out in the middle of the football pitch and I'm just recording for my friends while they run drills. Okay, we can do something about that. It looks a little doofy, but it works. And that's what's important, right? Anybody do yoga? You know horse stance? Seriously. Because you are using the long muscles, because if you lock your knees, you bounce. You can't help it. Just your heartbeat alone will make you vibrate. But if you can use the long muscles, your feet shoulder width apart, bend at the knee, sit back a little bit, proper posture. This takes a lot of your bounciness out. You kind of will do this just because your breath. But this, in a slow motion, is better than uh, I'm locking my knees and how I bounce. And of course, finally, maybe you've used this in your lectures, and I really support doing it. I know some teachers don't like it, but you know what? You're paying me here. Get back to your desk. Become a tripod at your desk. Right? Here we go. I'm sitting. Scoot way, way up, right up against the desk, elbow, elbow, grab camera, right? If the teacher walks around, I can kind of angle my 
whole body track. But I've got my sternum up against the desk. I've got my elbows on the desk. My feet are firmly planted on the ground, not on the chair, flat, right? I'm taking all of my body's dynamic systems and I'm putting it into the floor, I'm putting it into the chair, I'm putting it to the desk, I'm trying to get it out of the camera. So you can track me just by leaning and turning with your core, keeping your elbows steady on there. You don't have to slide or anything. You get it right, you're making a little tripod. Push it up nice and tight against the desk. Oh, it died on me. Did turn up on the Yeah, I did, there you go. <laughs> right, okay. So this is the good steps to it. Five simple steps. And this works for your phone. This works, I'm gonna have mine too. This works for your phone. And this works for our cameras, our camcorders. No tripod, become tripod. Landscape orientation. Both hands on it. Especially with my camcorders, please do not break them. If you break my camcorders, you owe me 200 bucks. You have to replace them. Elbows in, draws you in, turn the core, like that, don't care if you look goofy, that's not the point. No one's going to be paying attention to you anyway, you got the camera. They're all too busy feeling freaked out that you're recording them. Turn with the center 75 in the middle, keeping people in the middle of that, right in the middle of your frame. Become the tripod or a horse. Then, there's two considerations, of course. Light. Yes, you need to have a sense for the light in a place. This room, wonderfully lit, right? Look at it, it's diffuse light. There's like no shadows. I'm fully lit in all directions. The light is scattered. It's not like a spotlight coming on me. It's just in every position possible. <coughs> on the other hand, This looks terrible. Are you at the theater? Ah, strong light. Shadows hitting me very strongly. I'm washed out against this backdrop as I walk around like the words come over my face. Additionally, if I was filming, that thing's in my camera. It's blind. It can't see anything. So light is always an issue when you're taking video. And this can be really tough. So if you're taking video and you're in a, a lecture like this and the professor turns off the lights and is doing stuff up here, ask them to turn maybe the backlight on or something. Just something to help because it will totally ruin your ability to see. Just even that, right? Even that softens it. If you're outside, never, ever, ever face towards the sun. It will just destroy any video you take. It will destroy any picture you take. You can't deal with it. So, the last one, of course, is sound. Don't do stuff where it's noisy. What are you going to do? I mean, sometimes that's just unavoidable, right? But in this particular soundscape, this is a pretty good one. It is a little echoey in here. Soft surfaces really help. They take out the bounce and the reverb. So I'm also enunciating as much as I can. I'm projecting my voice as much as I can to help you with that. The sound is always an issue. Now we can deal with some sound, but we're not going to. I don't want to focus on sound. I want to focus on your use of cameras in this course, rather than your use of mitigating effects. So that's why we have this little lesson. Okay, cut.